Hello everyone, my name is Viraj and today we will be looking at the 20th problem from the CP31 sheet by TLA eliminators under the 800 rated questions. Let's go. So I'll be moving on to my CP31 sheet over here. I have crossed off my 800 rated parameter and I have the 20th problem, twin permutations. So I'll open this. Let's read. So you are given a permutation A of length N. Find any permutation B of length N such that a1 plus b1 is less than a2 plus b2 is less than less than equal to a3 plus b3 is less than equal to so on so on less than equal to specifically a n plus b n that is it can be proven a permutation b satisfies this above condition all right so let us try to understand this problem by simple generalization what are they saying all right so they have used quite a few number of terms over here they have said you have a term n given to you so i have a term n with me and that is basically n size of stuff and then I have an array and this array is specifically a n sized permutation. Now what does a permutation mean? A permutation simply means like it's type of an array representation of numbers where if you say you have an n sized permutation it is going to have two properties. It's going to have numbers from 1 to n only and every number is unique. Every number is unique. These are the two properties that a permutation or a array which satisfies these two properties will be called in permutation. Now, why is there a possibility that there can be more than one permutation of n size? As you can very well understand the question that they are talking about a permutation b that is of the same n size. So for a single n size, let's say n is 4, then I am saying I can have more than one 4 sized permutation. Why is that? Because if you let's say count let's say maybe an array like 2, 3, 4, 1 as a 4 size permutation because this satisfies all the condition it has numbers from 1 to n and every number is unique every number is repeated only once. So now understand this that nowhere in the permutation conditions is as written what was the order of numbers you follow. That means if I just make some changes in this array and maybe I reported like this 3, 2, 4, 1. This is also an array which is an n sized or 4 size permutation because it follows all the two conditions and that is why you can have more than one permutation since the order of the numbers don't matter. Alright, I hope this is clear. Now, considering you have a 4 or n sized in general case permutation, what is the question asking you? The question is asking you, given that you have this n size permutation, let's call this a1, a2 number, a3 number, a4 number, so on till a n number, you have to create one more n size permutation b. I'll call these number b1, b2, b3, so on, so on till pn, such that the sum of the first two numbers, both from array 1, that is array a and array b, is less than equal to the numbers that are uh, the next two numbers sum, that is like a2 from the second array, or the sorry, from the first array a, and b2 from the array b is less than equal to a3 plus b3 and so on so on is less than equal to a n plus b n. So this is something that you want to create. You want to create such an array or report such an array b. Now the question is simply saying if you think that you can report such a permutation in this whole problem they have already mentioned that such a permutation b will always exist. So there is no possibility of a yes or no right if, if you are thinking maybe a permutation like b does not exist. No that's not the case they have very well said in the question that such a b permutation is always findable. So the answer to such a b permutation always mm -hmm. exists. What we are trying to do is or what the question is asking you is you create this permutation b and actually report this permutation b to me. So I want to print this permutation b. This is the problem. This is my target that I want to do. All right. So now let us look at the sample cases. Let's say I have an array 1, 2, 4, 5, 3. So the permutation is 1, 2, 4, 5, 3. And accordingly, the answer to them is 1, 2, 4, 3, 5. So if I write 1, 2, 4, 3, 5, I can very clearly see some important point. If you calculate the sum of both the numbers, like this plus this, 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 you get 2, 4, 8, 8, and 8. And now if you put a sign of a relational uh, sign of where if what is bigger than what then you get that 2 is less than equal to 4 is less than equal to 8 is less than equal to 8 is less than equal to 8 so that means like not 2 being less than equal to 8 of course you can understand the whole increasing pattern that is being followed ideally meaning that this summed uh, a1 plus b1 a2 plus b2 sort of an array structure you have created is increasing in order it's 
specifically following the condition of less than equal to less than equal to less than equal to hence this permutation b is a correct answer this can be reported because this satisfies what i finally want right so i hope this ca sample case is clear now if you pick up your pen and paper and run the same thing on the other cases and just cross verify them with their given answers you will understand that yeah every case is following the condition that i am creating such a uh, satisfaction in this equality in this relation uh, that i want a1 plus b1 should be less than equal to a2 plus b2 so on so on till a n plus b n right so very very simple problem to understand and catch up but the solution is something that's very very tricky all right so before you actually move on to the solution let's actually discuss a very important factor in this problem that is what do you pictureize the time complexity to be when you actually write a solution okay so by virtue i know that like i i know by fact i have 1 second as 10 power 8 operations given to me now in 1 second if i have 10 power 8 operations and time limit per test file or test is 1 second that means basically in this question if one test run runs it allows you 10 par 8 operations got to go now in every test there are some test cases you can see every each test contains some multiple test cases and the, those are represented by the variable t which is actually in 2000 order that means if i ask you what's the number of operations you can perform for every test case that number actually changes it becomes 10 par 8 upon 2000 which basically becomes 1 by 2 into 10 par 5 or very acutely you can say this becomes 2 into uh sorry not 2 this becomes 5 into 10 power 4 now 5 into 10 power 4 is sort of a 10 power 4 order of elementary operations you can perform for every test case now this is very very important because if i look back at the problem i have n in 100 order that means if n is given in 100 order can i create a solution that runs like o of n square yeah o of n square will work now if i want to create a solution that is o of n cube then n cube will not work like maybe if i go above of n square it's going to not work because n square is coming something like a 10 power 4 order 100 square that is 10 power 4 but if i go to 10 power like if i go to sorry not 100 uh, that was 100 power 2 so that gave you 10 power 4 if i go to n cube you will get 100 power 3 which is somewhere around 10 power 6 or exactly 10 power 6 to be specific which is of course greater than what we discussed 10 power 4 that means n square is sort of a good upper bound to maintain below which i am good to go that means if i create a solution even lower o of n so on so on to a constant time complexity i'll all be good to go these all solutions will work assuming that my idea is correct but if i go above this even if my idea is correct i will start getting tle because this is where i cannot reach my final time complexity or this is where i don't want my final time complexity to reach now this is very very important this is an expected time complexity discussion which is very good because i know now before even starting the problem what sort of a solution do i expect to make i cannot run something that runs in n cube or above order all right great now let's come to the final problem discussion so ideally in this problem there is a very tricky observation that if you are able to catch or if you are able to catch this problem is pretty simple to understand all right let's try to understand this tricky tricky sample over here let's say i have been given that a1 plus a2 sorry not a1 plus a2 you say b1 a1 plus b1 is less than equal to a2 plus b2 so on so on this is less than equal to a n plus b n so let me generalize this out right let me just pick up two two like two adjacent sort of pairs of these sums that are together maybe i can write them at as a i plus b i is basically less than equal to a i plus 1 is plus you can say a i plus 1 plus b of i plus 1 i being a random index now the condition over here to understand is you are looking for less than equal to if i ask you that okay you try to solve this problem what is stopping you to make these two values equal the whole confusion lies is my mind is going to run towards how do i make it less than equal to but if i tell you that because you have a less than equal to relation you are still satisfying the whole uh, condition that is given to you if you just make equality that is you don't bother about less than equal but you only bother yourself with equal and this is the most important catch of the problem that how about i don't focus creating less than equal but i rather focus about creating equal that means my overall condition 
boils down to simply a1 plus b1 equal to a2 plus b2 so on so on so on so on equal to a n plus b n that means i have modified the whole condition and now i can my condition a1 plus b1 equal to a2 plus b2 so like this becomes equal to a3 plus b3 so on so on equal to a n plus b n is what survives and this can be equal to some constant number k this can be equal to some very good constant number k which i can now find to make sure that i always always create the best possible answer and now the argument so uh, the argument over here becomes is for a given ai bi can be can be simply n plus 1 minus ai this is the whole argument let's try to pictureize this argument and understand why is this true so you have a1 plus something like b1 and this needs to be a constant k let's just say that my argument currently is correct so you say this is a1 plus n plus 1 minus a1 so what do you effectively get like why is this expression coming to my mind is if effectively you want to make something equal to constant that means you of course want to remove the variable terms right so when i'm talking about a1 next time i would have talked about a2 next time i would have talked about a3 a4 so on so my intuition in my head is if i want to make it constant a1 or a2 or a3 all these terms should not pop so how about i do of of course i insert a negative of that number so that i'm able to remove that so it becomes a1 plus n plus 1 minus a1 which basically makes that a1 and a1 gets cancelled so now you are left only with n plus 1 which is actually equal to a constant k and this is going to remain everywhere yeah that makes sense this is going to remain everywhere because i know that similar in this manner how a1 plus b1 was put but b1 was replaced with n plus 1 minus a1 same thing would have been done with a2 a2 plus n plus 1 minus a2 so a2 and a2 would have been cancelled similarly a3 plus n plus 1 minus uh, a3 and a3 and a3 would have been cancelled so effectively you would have been left with the expression over here if this was a1 plus b1 equal to a2 plus b2 effectively these terms would have become n plus 1 n plus 1 n plus 1 n plus 1 and so on so on so on so you would have satisfied that every term has become a constant term equal to k being now that we understand k is n plus 1 but now you will ask me that remember our target was to print the array b so if i print the array b it should be a permutation that's the top condition i cannot print any random array b i want the b array to be a permutation itself and the argument over here is yes the r the uh, array b is still going to be a permutation why is that try to visualize this part let's say you have a number a1 counter to this number the number b1 looks like n plus 1 minus a1 now if you talk about any number ai that number ai is of course greater than equal to 1 and it's less than equal to 1 that's basically the range of this let's just say that this is the lowest possible number let's say this number is 1 so if this is 1 that is a1 is 1 then basically you get something like this that is n plus 1 minus 1 so you get a number n let's say this ai number is some other number in this range let's say the number is n so you basically get n plus 1 minus n which basically gives you 1 so can you see this clever move that we have done over here depending on a value of ai bith value or bi value actually translates to a unique value which is again in the range from 1 to n that is what we took right if we took the lowest possible ai we got n if we took the highest possible ai that is n we got actually 1 so if for every ai i get an opposite number which is like the bi number which is in the range from 1 to n and it's also unique every time since ai is unique every time then doesn't that uh, fulfill my condition of what we declared to be a permutation that was it should have numbers from 1 to n and every number should be unique yes it does that's why this clever move of printing n plus 1 minus ai is what finally hits and creating a bi th bi, bi number like this and so on every bi number like this consequently by its calculation with ai gives me a permutation b which can be reported as my answer all right so this is a very very clever problem first idea rather than focusing on creating less than equal to i focused on creating only equal to this limited me to create only one single constant term in every summed up position and that turned out to be n plus 1 why 
टू रीजन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अफकोर्स एन प्लस वन इज नो लॉन्गर अ वेरिएबल टर्म सिंस एन इज कॉन्स्टेंट एंड प्लस वन अगेन इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट सो एन प्लस वन इफेक्टिवली इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट टर्म इट इज सेटिस्फाइंग द कंडीशन अदर थिंग इज काउंटर एक्टिवली इट्स गिविंग मी एवरी बी आई नंबर फ्रॉम एन ए आई नंबर विच इज विद इन वन टू एन एंड सिंस दैट ए आई नंबर इज यूनिक सो इज द बी आई नंबर दैट मीन्स ए आई नंबर बींग पार्ट ऑफ परमिटेशन जनरेट्स अनदर नंबर बी आई विच इज अगेन अ पार्ट ऑफ परमिटेशन दैट परमिटेशन इज ऑफकोर्स डिफरेंट दैन द ए परमिटेशन सो इट ओवरऑल क्रिएट्स अ बी परमिटेशन फॉर मी विच इज ऑफ एन साइज एंड दिस वॉट आई वॉन्ट All right, so very very simple problem. Once you understand this whole ideology, you can pause the video, drop some cases on your own, and see that this always always works. And you will be able to visualize after like five six cases on your pen and copy why is this n plus one minus b i thing working or n n plus one minus a i sorry thing working. Let's take a quick example to better visualize this. All right, let's say I have a permutation a, and I'll take n equals to five. So I'll I'll create a five size permutation. Just for example, let's say I have three four, maybe five one and two. So what do I actually want? I want a b array that is a permutation. Now, according to the formula, if we quickly calculate b array, n plus one is going to be like I'll write this n plus one is going to be six. So from this six value, I want every value to be subtracted, and that is going to be that corresponding b i value. That means if I calculate the array b, this is six minus three for the first place. This is three. Six minus four for the first place two. Six minus five for the first place one. Six minus one for the first place five. Now six minus two for the first place that's four. Now, should I ask you? Do you think b is a permutation? Of course, your answer will be yes, because b has all the numbers from one to n, and b has all the numbers from one to n coming exactly once. Those are the only conditions required. Order does not matter. So a is of course a five size permutation, and b is also a five size permutation. So of course we have created a b that was required in the question. But let's go back to the condition. You wanted a one plus b one less than equal to a two plus b two, so on, so on, so on. If I calculate individually every place's sum a one, a i, and b i to be specific, this turns out to be six. This is six. This is six. This is six. This is six. All these five values are basically six, or five, all these five places of individual uh, together sum of a i and b i is six. In this relation, six is less than equal to six. 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 So you know that we created the b permutation. It was of course a permutation. We could see it's a permutation. Very clear example in front of me, and the condition is satisfied. That means. we have cleverly deduced that yes this formula is working and for this example that i have shown you this formula is actually fetching me a correct b array now you can pause the video draw some more test cases and you will understand this very cleverly that okay yes this formula is working all right so this is the whole idea this is the whole check of why the formula is correct All right. So if now the problem is clear, let's move on to the code part. It's going to be very very simple. All I do over here is take the input of the test case, then I'll take the input of the array, and then I can simply print n plus one minus a i in a single line, keeping spaces and change the line at the end. So I'm basically doing nothing. All the trip and trick in this problem was understanding n plus one minus a i, counteracting to every b i term. All right. Now, what about the time complexity? I have an n order over there to in to uh, n order over there to take the input and n order order over here to simply print the answer. That means my overall time complexity is simply O of you can say O of n. Now, n was given to me as uh, this was given hundred to me, which means I have calculated time complexity of O of hundred operations. Definitely, this is very good to go because I wanted an upper bound of like five into ten power four operations. So this is much lower than this. Now, what about space complexity? Of course, you can say that the space complexity looks something like O of n, dependent on the array input that I took, which is again O of hundred. So space and time both are within my boundaries. Actually, highly bit within my boundaries, you can say. And since the logic is correct, I am very present. I am presenting a code that's well within my boundaries. This is going to get me accepted solution. It's going to get me the green check on the platform. So I hope you like the video. Thank you for watching.